Morgan. Morgan. Absolutely, Mr. <coughs> Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. His objectives are to use stance, movement, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact to express his message and achieve the purpose of the speech. Two, to make body language smooth and natural. Timing, Mr. Timer, is five to seven minutes. <coughs> Joshua's speech is called The Waking Nightmare. Since ancient times, the darkness and quiet of night has been the setting for various terrifying experiences that were attributed to everything from monsters and spirits to aliens from another planet. Josh has been through some of these experiences and would like to offer some insight into what may actually be there lurking in the dark. Josh Burns, The Waking Nightmare. The Waking Nightmare, Josh Burns. Hello, Toastmasters, yes. I'm gonna describe a scenario to you, an experience. I want you to try and, as Eric was saying, visualize it in your mind so you can actually see what's going on. Imagine about two or three o'clock in the morning. You're laying in bed, you had been asleep, and you've just woken up, and you're just laying there still, looking around the room. And then something catches your eye, just out of the corner of your eye. You see something, you glance over, and there is this tall, dark figure standing either maybe at the foot of your bed, maybe at the side of your bed, eight to 10 feet tall, about as high as your ceiling. No discernible features that you can really tell. It appears to be this being made of shadow. Your first instinct is to jump up out of bed. You're afraid, you're shocked. And when you try to do that, you realize I can't move. I'm paralyzed, stuck in this position. You try to lift your arm, it feels like it literally weighs a ton. Every ounce of energy you have just goes into moving a finger and it just will not budge. So you decide, okay, time to scream for help. When you go to scream, all it comes out is just a little gurgle or a silent groan. <clears throat> so again, you try to fight against it, and you're just trying as hard as you can to struggle and to move, and just nothing works, and after what seems like hours, you finally resign yourself to your fate and relax back and accept what's going to come, and right then when you relax, you just spring forward out of bed, like you were being constrained by some elastic band that had just snapped. You look around the room, nothing's there. Everything seems to be fine. But you know that something had just happened. So my question is, you just experienced this. What happened? How would you explain this in your mind? Well, I have experienced this. And it's a very terrifying experience. But it's not terrifying in the sense that, oh man, there's this demon at the foot of my bed, or I'm being abducted by aliens. These experiences started when I was about 14 years old, and would range in occurrence from every night to maybe every other month. And when I was younger, at 14, I had thought, it's a ghost, it's a demon. I was terrified by these things. But then I got older, and reason started to kick in. And I started to think, what's actually going on here? So using the power of the all-knowing Google, I did some research <laughs> and discovered this thing that will happen to a lot of people, most people actually, called sleep paralysis. Has anybody here heard of sleep paralysis before? Has anybody experienced sleep paralysis before? All right, so you know what I'm talking about. It's pretty scary. You can't move. You wake up, and you're like, what's going on? <clears throat> Basically, what sleep paralysis is, let me explain the process. When you're going to sleep or waking up, it can happen in either stage, your body goes through this series of processes, these series of steps, before you get to dreaming or as you're coming out of dreaming. One of the things that your body does, it's a very important thing, is 
your brain will paralyze you while you're dreaming so that you're not flailing your arms and kicking your legs while you're running around. You're just still. There to protect us. Now sometimes, when you're waking up, and it happens to some people maybe once in their life, some people don't experience it all, some people, like myself, experience it all the time. I had it last night. Some people skip the step of becoming unparalyzed when you're waking up. And, or when you're going to, to sleep, you start to wake up, but your brain doesn't unparalyze itself, and you continue into dream state. So you're in your dream state, and your brain is still firing all the neurons and everything to basically give you a dream. So you begin to see the things that you may dream about while you're awake. And your eyes can move around just like they do when you're dreaming. You enter the REM state. And you can see these various things. Now, what's interesting is when I did some research on this, I found that it was not unique to me or unique to my area. There's occurrences of this all over the world. In the southern states, it's referred to as the old hag syndrome. <laughs> the concept of the spirit of an old hag coming to sit on your chest and choke you. In Fiji, it's called Kana Tabaro, which basically means being eaten or possessed <coughs> by a demon. Nigeria, it's referred to as the devil on your back. And in Turkey, it's called Karabasan, which basically refers to a demon that's going to come and strangle you unless you pray to God for salvation. And if you don't, then he's going to strangle you, kill you, and drag your soul off to hell. <coughs> After doing some research, the thing that really struck me, though, is that a lot of these things, a lot of these accounts describe this tall, dark figure, this, this thing that you can't really see, but it just looks like this figure of shadow. And I was like, why does everybody see the same thing? And from what I've been able to, to tell from my research is that basically you're just paralyzed and you are freaked out because you can't move. So, you don't know why this is happening, and your mind starts to produce some visual element of this unknown fear, this faceless figure. That is basically just a visual representation of everything that's freaking you out in that moment. So, like this with other things, there are many things in life that we can get freaked out about, that will just terrify us no end, that could actually form our entire being, our entire life, and we formed off of these fears that we have of things that may not actually be there. It may just be some small thing that we had thought about or experienced, mm. had a bad experience, and we built this entire <coughs> scenario out of it that shapes us. So for years, we've had these stories of demons and ghosts and alien abductions and monsters that are so prevalent in society today that really most of these can be attributed to your mind simply skipping a small step. An important step, but a small step. So basically my challenge to you today is if you have something in your life that is really terrifying you or is holding you back from something, to take a step back from it and try to see it for what it really might be instead of what you think it could be and what you're afraid it might be. That's your question. Our next speaker is Mary, giving us her icebreaker speech, her evaluator is Lee Russell. Please give her, us her objective.